हेलो वेलकम टू सिंप्लीफाइड सेस क्लासेस माय नेम इज रजत टुडे टॉपिक इज क्लस्टर एनालिसिस सो लेट स्टार्ट इट सो आर मोड ऑफ लर्निंग वुड बी पावर पॉइंट प्रेजेंटेशन एंड वी विल डू हैंड्स ऑन एक्सपीरियंस ऑन सेस ऑल राइट सो लेट स्टार्ट विद क्लस्टर एनालिसिस the topics covered is what is cluster analysis what are various types of cluster analysis how to do it in sas and how to check the result and diagnostics so what is cluster analysis well it is a technique of unsupervised learning we'll explain the term unsupervised learning so basically it's a technique of unsupervised learning in which objects or say observations similar to each other but distinct from other are marked in a group or clusters so let's understand the word unsupervised learning so mostly in most of our statistical methods we have y variable and few x variables x1 x2 and x3 what we try to do we try to understand the behavior of x by sorry based on changes in x1 x2 x3 so we try to see how can we segment different y or dependent variable objective variable based on your attribute variables but in the cluster analysis we don't have a objective function we don't have a y variable we just work with x1 x2 and x3 only independent variables so when we have such kind of analysis it is called supervised learning when we have only x variables with us and we try to see any possible segments within uh, these variables we call it unsupervised learning fine so what we try to do let's say we have few day observation we say let's say these are observation so we say that these guys are similar these guys are similar these guys are similar but similar within and distinct among so we try to bundle them into various groups and these groups are homogeneous within and heterogeneous among right so in other words we are uh, in cluster analysis we divide the whole population into groups which are distinct among but similar within fine we'll understand it by example let's say we have few logs with us now the two attributes that we can see here are one size and second is color fine now the colors are golden and green size are small and large so based on these attributes what we can do we can keep all the small logs together fine and or first all large logs together so these three these two and these two would be kept together and then we can further classify these with, uh, seven logs by colors and we can place all you know yellow large logs together and green large together and finally we classify the logs is there any further classification possible not as such but yes it could be if there is a brand associated let's say this is brand x brand y brand x brand y so we can further classify it in you know by brand x or y right so this is the basics of cluster analysis there is no objective function all right so this is one more demonstration of how we can understand the cluster analysis let's say these are 
various observations the distance between the observation within cluster is very small but that between inter cluster is very high so this is the concept that we follow in cluster analysis as i already told there is no objective variable no y variable right like we have in decision tree in logistic regression so those are supervised learning techniques we will learn these techniques in our uh, in some of the classes but now we, in this class we are learning subjective segmentation all right we can use only continuous variable to do cluster analysis and the final cluster should be homogeneous within and heterogeneous among this is one more demonstration let's say there are many people and we are having to attribute information we are having information of current balance that they are maintaining in their account and the income monthly income so we classify balance into low medium high and also gross monthly income into low low medium high now these people are the people having current balance in their account but low income right on the other hand these people are having high income but low balance so we can say that they might be having some parental assets in their you know which they have uh, got from their you know parents as a gift and these people must have certain you know high level of liabilities more expenses or they must have done some investment that's why they are low in current balance but high in income right so we can classify the pe similar people together now how to do cluster analysis so first you should know you should know the data right you should know your data we can do either a hierarchical clustering or a non hierarchical clustering based on number of observation that you have in your data if your data is small so generally small data you use for the learning purpose for research purpose and for the large data you use non hierarchical clustering we'll explain these in the session itself but this is the principle that if we have small data so don't go by the number 100 it could even if you are having 150 observation you can go with the hierarchical clustering so there is no hard and fast rule but there should be some cut off that you should decide that now data is large and now i should go for hierarchical clustering theoretically it's 100 all right now hierarchical clustering can be of two type agglomerative and divisive which are just uh, you know different by the principle but almost same this is very different all right so let's move ahead what is hierarchical clustering in agglomerative sense so when we say agglomerative let's say we have five observation a b c d e these are let's say uh, people five people and their attribute information is with us we can say initially we keep all five people together a b c d and e now what we find that a and b are most similar we club them into a cluster we also find that and then we keep c and d as such and e also as such in the next step we find that c and d are similar and we make a further cluster c d e we keep different going to next step we find that now c d cluster and e are similar so we make one of, uh, uh, another cluster now we are having two clusters a b and c d e we can make a final cluster which we, in which we keep all the observation which doesn't make any sense because there is no information uh, that we are driving once we make a complete cluster but yes 
from step 4 we can say that ab are similar within cde are similar within but they are distinct among right so we can also go from making you know a complete cluster of a b c d e then we break it into a b and then c d e we can then break it further c d e c d and e right so there are two methods agglomerative and divisive ultimately if their results are same so this is called hierarchy clustering now how do we say i am just going back how can we say that ab and cde are distinct in hierarchy clustering so i'll just move a back a few slide remember these clusters we said that their inter cluster distance should be high and intra cluster distance should be low all right so these distance how do we calculate these distance among clusters so moving ahead now let's say we have two clusters cluster a and cluster b how do we calculate the distance between two clusters so there are many methods first method is single linkage in which what we find the nearest neighbor so in the example this point and this point are the nearest neighbor of the cluster we find the aerial distance or euclidean distance also you understand euclidean distance that is d is equal to root of y2 minus y1 ka sorry y1 ka whole square plus x2 minus x1 ka whole square right so where x and y are the attributes so we find out the distance now this is called single linkage second is complete linkage in which we find out the farthest farthest distance among two clusters right in which so uh, this is another way right now the third method could be in which we find out the all the possible distances uh, in between clusters so now this point this point this point this point this point this point so three distance for this again three distances for this guy and three dist distances for this guy 1 2 3 right so it would be sort of uh, we can say the cartesian product of two clusters these many distance we calculate and we find out the average distance right the fourth approach is centroid distance in which we first find out the center of this cluster again this one and then we find out the distance so there are just four distance the fifth distance that is uh, theoretically distinct uh, from all the methods that we just explained because it uses the analysis of variance anova approach to evaluate the distance so this is also one of the methods that we can use 